Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be doing the full review for this iQOO 11 smartphone that I have been actually using for the week or so and this is actually a review unit that was sent to me by iQOO team and they might not like my review but anyways I feel uh, I have to tell you the truth what I felt about this smartphone after using it so I'll divide it between pros and cons so that you get a better idea about it. So guys, let's start with the pros. And uh, the first uh, thing that I liked about this smartphone is that as of now, technically, uh, this is one of the fastest Android smartphones that you can buy in India. This comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And yes, it's fast. In fact, I won't get into the benchmarks and all these things because uh, a week ago I had actually uh, posted the benchmarks and compared it with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 8 Plus Gen 1. You can watch that video. I'll leave uh, that in the card. So yes. Technically, yes, it's very, very fast. But again, everything is not rosy. So again, watch the whole video. I'm dividing it between pros and cons. Okay, the first thing that I liked about this device is the screen. And uh, I like the that this is using the new LTPO screen. Hence, it's actually very power efficient. Technically speaking, this is a 144 hertz screen. Yes, it can go. But again, uh, I noticed that the optimizations have been not done that well. But if you just talk about the screen, uh, it's a good quality screen. It can get enough bright as you can see. Uh, I'm just keeping it in a half brightness. And also at night, it goes sufficiently dull that it doesn't strain your eyes. So it's a good quality screen. And as it's LTPO, it consumes a lot less power compared to other AMOLED screens. So that way in terms of screen are uh, not an issue uh, about it. Uh, next thing is regarding the processors I have already told you Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This is one of the fastest and one of the best uh, processor I feel that Qualcomm has released in the past two and a half years. So obviously the performance, the raw performance is very very good but I feel uh, uh, Aiku with this particular smartphone is simply not able to actually extract the performance because I noticed I'll show you that in the later part of the video that uh, the phone though it's having very very fast RAM the pr processor is great but actual day-to-day -day performance there is some stuttering and stuff I'll show you that later but as uh, for the processor, I'm just hoping with future updates, it fixes. And by the way, guys, before anybody says, I have applied the latest one OT update that had come to the smartphone. Uh, so it's uh, with that one. What I'm, I'm talking is with that. Uh, if I put my SIM on this one, uh, I was getting 5G signal on this one. So 5G is available out of the box. You don't need that OT update on stuff like that. So that way it is good. Uh, and 5G reception was also very fine on this one. I did test it. Okay, next thing I liked is, and I think so this is the biggest trump card of this smartphone. And this might be because of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the LTPO 4 screen combination. The battery life I was getting on this smartphone is uh, one of the best that I would say that I have got among flagship Android smartphone. It behaves like a mid-range smartphone in terms of battery life. And that's actually a very good thing because generally the flagships hover around five or six hours of screen on time for the typical full day of usage. This is uh, exceptionally well. This is about eight or nine hours. Let me actually show you. I'll show you some screenshots and I saved it. In fact, I had posted about this one also, uh, the battery life and all those things. And uh, after about one and a half days, as you can see, this was the thing. And uh, I got a screen on time. This was about seven hours. Uh, of uh, SOT and in fact I even got close to about eight and a half hours so the battery life is actually really really good on this one and even the standby time uh, it was good it was not draining the battery with standby the only thing that I noticed is that uh, on few 5G signal when I was using the phone quite a bit that is the only place where it was actually draining a little bit of battery. Uh, so there is some optimization that needs to be done. But apart from that, if you're mostly uh, like typical uh, person, 80% on Wi-Fi, in your office you have Wi-Fi, in your house you have Wi-Fi, you'll get exceptionally good battery life. One of the best that I've seen among Android uh, smartphones for flagship. In fact, uh, it was beating the Motorola Edge 30 Ultra, uh, which was the biggest trump card, I would say, best battery life uh, performing smartphone that I had tested earlier. This one actually beats that also. So that way it's actually really, really 
good okay now moving to the next thing this is again coming down to the snapdragon 8 gen 2 with regular usage of the smartphone it never got actually hot or anything like that so that way it is good because that was not the case with many of the smartphones last year with the snapdragon 8 gen 1 they used to heat up even with casual usage browsing etc if you do uh, for uh, some time it used to do that uh, so this one does not exhibit heating only place where i noticed it got a little bit warm was when i was using camera but that's again normal so that way i feel in, ter in terms of thermals also uh, this chip will do a good job uh, next thing I liked about this one is the stereo speakers are actually really, really loud. Uh, so that's actually a nice uh, thing. If I go to copyright uh, free music, let's just play this NC as uh, copyright free music. And if I increase it, let me just skip. As you can see, it goes actually pretty loud. Yes, it does go uh, pretty loud, but one thing I noticed is that there is no depth that is a little bit of bass is there in some of the higher end uh, smartphones, for example, Samsung, Pixel, etc. with their stereo speakers. That was not there, but in terms of loudness, it was there. So there, a little bit of finesse was missing, but in terms of loudness, I do not have a problem. Uh, next thing is uh, regarding the call quality. I have taken out my primary SIM from as of now, but I was using it with my primary SIM and the earpiece quality is good on this one. That was loud and clear. And I also like the fact that though by default it comes with the Google dialer, I did not have the proximity sensor issue that has been plaguing a lot of Android smartphones right now. So I, I did not have to change it from the uh, default what do you say Google dialer. So that way it was nice. Uh, the cell reception was good. The earpiece is good. So that way for taking calls and stuff, it's uh, a nice experience. I also tested it with a, uh, a variety of TWSs because I was testing some. And again, in Bluetooth reception also, I did not have any issues with this one. Uh, now moving to uh, the camera on this one. Uh, here it's a mixed thing the main camera is a 50 megapixel then we have actually a 13 megapixel which is actually a 2x zoom i don't get the logic of 2x zoom it should have been 3x or 5x but yeah you have 3x zoom but the ultra wide is just 8 megapixel and i would say the camera is not bad but again not outstanding also uh, to give you an idea here are the sample shots outdoor shots with the main camera actually come out good as you can see the color protection is also good and in mixed lighting conditions i would say also here surprisingly it did a lot better than i thought also in indoor uh, lighting conditions it performed actually pretty well uh, but when it comes to very low lighting i noticed a little bit of softness in the picture but overall it was decent Moving to selfies, these were taken in the normal mode in artificial lighting conditions and they do a good job. And these were taken in the portrait bokeh mode. Okay now guys, now moving to the cons with the smartphone. And here I am actually on paper. Uh, this is one of the fastest smartphone because it comes with the Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 2. But in reality, it does not perform uh, that well in real world situation. For example, if I just even uh, I'm just using this phone normally like this. This is set to that higher refresh rate uh, um, and all this auto. It is actually showing a little bit of stutters in the UI. And this is after the second, uh, the OT update. Prior to the first OT update, it was even uh, bad. So that is something that I noticed immediately. And again, I, is, I was testing some older smartphones. Uh, and let's say the older smartphones, for example, this is the s22 ultra uh, the maximum refresh rate of this one is actually 120 hertz but in terms of fluidity just notice this phone how fluid this economic times page if i reload this one is loading here you f notice that choppiness here it is very very smooth even when i'm just moving between the apps here we have some micro stutters uh, so i was a little bit perplexed about that one and uh, this is the nothing phone and even this nothing phone, which is again set to 120 hertz, uh, is actually way more fluid in UI animations. As you can see, this again, I reload this, I'll reload this page also. Again, as you can see, this is way more smoother. In Chrome, I'm noticing slight judders. This judders improved a little bit with the last update, but again, still I notice it. And within the UI, this has frame drops. 
which is something that I did not like. So yes, they are telling it's 144 hertz uh, within the UI 120 hertz, but it's not able to sustain that 120 hertz. It's, I, I would say, hovering all the place between 80 to 90 hertz. And you definitely notice that if you are used to a good smartphone that can handle 120 hertz. So here I feel just uh, I could uh, to be the first in releasing this smartphone they just released the smartphone with the snapdragon 8 gen 2 but they simply did not optimize it and this i noticed in day to day activities so though i'm having the flagship processor the fastest processor but real world the performance that i'm getting uh, the thumbs and stutters frame drops is something that i noticed every day when i was using this smartphone yes uh, regarding games it can play all the games because it has the fastest gpu on android but the optimizations, the stutters that I'm seeing, the animation drops are there quite a bit on this smartphone. So I feel uh, they just rushed out the smartphone without optimizing uh, the same because the performance what I'm getting, even a Snapdragon 778, this nothing phone feels a lot more fluid in usage compared to this one. Uh, regarding the camera samples as you saw uh, most uh, outdoor shots it does great but when it comes to dynamic range i feel the dynamic range is also very very poor on this smartphone in fact this is my daughter's s20 fe and notice how well it did in shadowed areas compared to this smartphone so i feel uh in terms of camera also they are holding back because generally again iQOO is nothing but a vivo subsidiary vivo does very good in camera so i was having far more uh, what do you say uh, expectations considering the isp that is there on the snapdragon 8 gen 2 is among the best so frankly in terms of camera i would say again the camera performance is okay but again in challenging uh, situations it just falls apart also coming to the ultra wide i don't get it on a flagship 8 megapixel yes the good thing is that in outdoor shots at least there is no major color difference uh, comparing it from the primary 50 megapixel camera but when the lighting is a little bit low and challenging situation it just falls apart another thing is regarding the front facing camera though it's a 16 megapixel for some reason again iQOO has limited the video recording to just 1080p uh, they don't give 4k again the processor has enough power the, so that you can even shoot 4k but i don't know why they have restricted it so some of these uh, decisions what iQOO has done are like perplexing now coming to another thing that i do not like with this smartphone is that this smartphone the base variant is also priced at about 60,000, and with card discount you can get it for 55 but at even at this price point there is no ip protection i'm not expecting ip68 or something but some sort of ip production should have been there considering the price point but that is also not there on this uh, smartphone uh, next thing is that again this is a plaguing uh, almost every android smartphone so i won't be specific to this but again the haptic motor feedback is again very very average i would say again you notice that stuttering and lag that's what i was talking within the ui you see that so haptic feedback is there don't get me wrong but again uh, it's not done uh, that well in my frank opinion uh, next thing is again considering the price point it does have all these apps are actually bloatware guys and it also has this uh, hot games and all this i didn't enable uh, agreed it it will show that so there is quite a bit of bloatware that is present on this smartphone again that's not a good thing again considering the price point i expect yes iq smartphones in the mid range or the premium mid range having bloatware but this is a smartphone that is costing 60,000 and you have bloatware. And uh, many of the bloatware, for example, their custom app or something keeps sending you notifications over here to install this app or that app. Yes, you can disable it. But at this price point, uh, you're uh, uh, touting this as the fastest flagship smartphone or whatever. Having bloatware is uh, not a good idea in my frank opinion. Coming down to the pricing of this smartphone, uh, because this was one of the first smartphone with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset. Uh, I don't know how the other smartphones will be priced. For example, we know that the OnePlus 11 uh, will be coming out in February with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So we'll know what is the uh, pricing. Uh, so I just don't want to comment too much. But again, iQOO, as a brand, iQOO uh, cut itself because of the aggressive price points. But now at this this smartphone for the price point of even with the discount if you talk 55,000, 
I feel it's priced a little bit higher because of the compromises that I've mentioned and also it has bloatware. So certainly Icon uh, needs to relook at their smartphones that they're launching in India and just don't launch one smartphone after the other. If you're launching a smartphone, spend a little bit time and optimize the software that is present on the smartphone. It doesn't matter. You might be having the fastest processor available, but let's say you're not able to take the advantage of the processor or use just about 40% of the performance of that. What's the use in my frank opinion? So I feel IQ as a brand really needs to rethink about the uh, positioning of this smartphone, the pricing, uh, the features, what they are offering. And also they have to start optimizing their smartphone. They just can't play on this specs and keep selling this smartphone. That's my frank opinion. So I hope IQ improves that with the future, uh, uh, what do you say, launches. And go slow down, slow down a little bit, pay attention, optimize the software. For example, uh, see what nothing did nothing but there's a smartphone uh, with updates they improved it so much uh, but if this phone which is a snapdragon 778 feels a little bit more fluid in operations compared to this smartphone then i don't know what is wrong with the industry i know the iq team might not like what i posted in my review but these are the facts and i thought somebody in the industry has to uh, tell the facts so that the brand wakes up and takes that into attention and i feel other youtubers just doing the unboxing and just praising stuff start testing the phone and start using the phone and then only share their experience anyways guys uh, that's it for now for this review thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys